Alrighty, I got it, I got it, I got it. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. It is Coach Robin, and today is Monday. It's December 21st. It's actually my brother Mike's birthday. I got to call him. So happy Monday to you all. I pray that you all had an amazing weekend. I got my folks over here on Instagram hanging out with me on today as well. So thank you guys so, so much. So you know that I have been sharing about my upcoming event, which is... Um, good stuff. Thank you. They're telling me all clear now. I appreciate you guys. I have the best, uh, best students. So, uh, I have the best students ever is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but I am excited. I've got the event planners boot camp coming up. Let me just go ahead and show you guys, uh, that flyer. Of course, this is, I think year four. Um, I used to do it all the time and then I took like three years off and then I'm back at it. So this will be year four that I've done it straight in a row. And of course, because of the pandemic, we're not able to be live together, but I'm going to do it virtually. So I want to invite you guys to register for the event planners boot camp. Today, though, I'm going to be sharing about Facebook ads. So for those of you, I have not had the pleasure of uh, hanging out with live before. I want you to know that this uh, upcoming uh, virtual live event is going to be just as good. I promise you. Um, I love having fun. I love sharing great content. Uh, but most importantly, I love being a blessing. And so that is exactly what we are going to do on January 2nd, which is the date of the event planners boot camp. All right. So, um, I want to ask you to please share this video. Yes. Let people know that coach robin is on y'all the girl i'm back on facebook i love youtube of course i've been building my channel over there but i wanted to make sure that i uh kind of got some balance so i'm back i'm glad to be back over on facebook and um you'll still see my videos over on youtube so don't get nervous um i literally have people that reach out to me and say oh my goodness you know i spent the weekend going through your videos so what a blessing that people uh care and are blessed um, to watch your content. So I want to let you all know that I have not moved away from YouTube, but I am going to uh, be coming on live more often over on Facebook. So um, for those of you that are not on my email list, I of course want to invite you to connect with me. It's really simple. All you have to do, of course, is text my last name, which is W A R E, to the number 22828. Uh, those of you on Instagram, you guys can put that in the comments for me. Text my last name, W-A-R-E, to the number 22828. All right, so let's get into today's teaching. not going to keep you very long. Um, I am excited, though, as I prepare for the Event Planners Boot Camp. One of the things I'm going to be talking about, of course, is Facebook. For those of you that do not have my ultimate Facebook manual for churches, it is available, of course, over on my website. In order to get it, all you have to do, of course, is go over to thewareagency.com. There's that address for you there, thewareagency.com. But in the book, I talk about, uh, for churches, uh, the importance of using Facebook for three reasons. Number one, for events. Number two, for evangelistic reasons. And then number three, for um, evergreen reasons. And so events, of course, uh, it's really important that we have uh, people attend our events. And so Facebook is a great way with 2 billion people on Facebook. A third of the world has a Facebook account. Is that not incredible, you guys? Well, there are 2 billion people on Facebook and there are a billion that are active every single day. And so if you think about it, uh, even with myself, someone that's very mindful and intentional about the time I spend on Facebook, I go on Facebook probably four to five times a day. I literally have to, um, well, I shouldn't say I go live, I go on Facebook four to five times a day. Probably, well, no, maybe three to four times a day. I go on it in the morning and probably afternoon and then I go on it at night. It's kind of where I get my news from. Um, and I'm able to check on people, but there are people studies show that go on Facebook up to eight times a day and they spend up to 20 minutes or more on Facebook. So it's important that we as churches, ministries, we understand the value 
value the real estate that Facebook provides for us. You know, the great uh, commission, it commands us to go out and to make disciples, not members, but to make disciples. And so Facebook is key in doing it. It, it is one place that we can all go and cast our nets and we are sure to catch fish. It's our responsibility to keep the fish in the net. Think about that. Yes. I think that is a tweetable. Uh, put that in the comments. It is our responsibility to keep the fish in the net. All right. So let's talk about this. You know, our message has not changed, just our method. So there are a lot of people that are like, oh my goodness, you know, I don't want to be, you know, on Facebook. You have to be. You, if you're in ministry, you have to be on Facebook, whether or not it's you or it's someone from your ministry, you have to have a presence on Facebook. Why would you work backwards? That doesn't make any sense to me that you would be willing to work backwards, meaning, well, I still want to go put ads in newspapers. I want to go and buy radio spots and all that stuff. Those are viable options for sure. But Facebook with 2 billion people and the ability to run ads to your exact demographic, you can't do that anywhere else. TV spots, you can buy TV spots, you can buy radio spots, but you cannot buy spots and say, I only want people that say they're event planners to see this ad. Not possible. You cannot buy a radio spot and say, I only want people that live in this zip code to hear this spot. Not possible. But it is possible on Facebook. So there are three things I talk about in my book and I'm even going to highlight today of why you need to use Facebook as a ministry. Number one, for your events. Again, events are our number one evangelistic tool. I'll talk more about that during the boot camp but events number two of course just for evangelism for you to share a word I love it I've got some students that go live every day doing prayers doing words of encouragement teaching that's a great way of, of to express evangelism and then number three is from an evergreen perspective what do I mean by evergreen meaning it's a way for you to stay top of mind you know why do you think McDonald's and Coca-Cola those fortune 500 companies consistently run ads I can tell you what you know um, uh, what is it um, Hamburger, the hamburger that McDonald's has. See, I don't even eat them, but I can tell you what they're made up of. The Big Mac. I can tell you what a Big Mac is made up of because I've heard the commercial so much. And when I think of wanting, you know, uh, a double patty sandwich, I think of the Big Mac from McDonald's. That's because they're always running commercials that keeps them top of mind. What's well, the same thing with your ministry? You can use Facebook ads as an evergreen model so that you remain top of mind. So now, before I talk a little bit more about the ad strategy that your church should be following. I want you to know that I am putting together a Facebook ads course specifically for churches. There are a lot of courses out there on Facebook ads, but not a lot of ad, not a lot of courses on Facebook ads for churches. I use them for clients. I understand how they work. Yes, Facebook changes the algorithms all the time, but for the most part, there is a formula, a blueprint, a strategy that you should use as it relates to Facebook ads for churches and that's why I'm putting together my course. Give me some thumbs up or hearts if you're excited about the fact that I am going to be sharing my uh, Facebook strategy through this new course. So I'll be sharing more about that coming up. But um, Facebook ads can be run for as little you guys as $5 a person. I mean $5 a day. There we go. Five dollars a day. And so um, literally uh, cheaper than five dollars a day. Now, I recommend that you start at five dollars a day, but you can run ads for even cheaper than that. So think about it. By the time you prepare um, a radio spot, you're going to have to hire somebody to do the voiceover. You're going to have to hire somebody to write the script. 
um, and you're going to have to pay for the uh, spot itself to be aired on you know however many radio stations you want the ad played on so most likely you are going to um i was um missing my daddy a little bit today so i have his phone here with me so that's the notifications going off because he loved huffington post and so they always send notifications so i have his phone there with me uh uh today can you guys not hear me over here let's see here i hope you can um let's see here let me make sure good all right i don't have any notices from anybody saying that you can't hear me over on instagram so um it may be uh your phone so check that out but thank you for that notice all right so um you can run facebook ads for as little as five dollars a day right so by the time you pay for that radio spot, all those different elements that I just shared with you, you're probably in for $1,500. Let me tell y'all what. For $1,500, you can run a Facebook ad that probably can reach tens of thousands of people that meet your specific demographic so let's say you've got a women's event um, maybe you're doing a giveaway for single parents uh, maybe you're doing a college event and you want to attract anyone that graduated from an HBCU you can set up those different demographics in your Facebook ads portal and for pennies reach them for pennies on the dollar you can reach them so I want you to understand through these three ways that I shared that you can use Facebook how each of these works so running an ad to promote an event I hear people say oh you know well we've done Facebook ads and we've not had success well typically People run, churches run Facebook ads to promote an event. So they do it, you know, a week out, two weeks out. They put a $50 ad buy on it. Um, maybe they do demographics. Maybe they don't. Um, and then, boom, they say, we didn't get anything from it. Well, it's because, as with anything, it takes more than just that one layer. Now, the one layer that you do can be um, intimidating, which is why um, I work with churches to train their teams how to overcome that, that fear or intimidation. Because once you understand the logic of how the Facebook ads process is, it will become less intimidating to you. The other thing is that... Um, you may need to run multiple ads promoting the same event. So I'm just explaining to you why you may not have had the success that you were thinking you were going to have with your event. The other thing is that you may not have had success with your event ad because it was one and done. You just did an, you did an ad for one particular event and then you didn't do ads the rest of the year. Well, it doesn't really work like that. Remember what I said about McDonald's being top of mind. Sometimes that ad is just going to introduce your ministry to the people on Facebook. Your second ad is going to reintroduce your ministry to those that see it on Facebook. And you know what I'm talking about when you're on Facebook and you see an ad pop up and it says sponsored? That's what I'm talking about. So you've got to keep your ads running so that people can get used to seeing it. Okay. Uh, the second type of ad. Oh, let me just add this one. Um, uh, when I talk about event ads, there's typically no real call to action other than attend our event or register for our event. So there's no engagement. There's no relationship building as a part of that event ad, which I'm telling you um, will definitely uh, hinder the success of your ad. 
Uh, the second type of ad I talked about was an evangelistic ad, something that is going to um, introduce your Facebook audience to the evangelism uh, program um, or event that your ministry is hosting. You know, right now uh, with the stimulus money, uh, the CARES Act, there's been a lot of grants that are um, made available. Which, by the way, y'all, I applied for a grant as a small business owner and got my notification that I am being considered, that my application is under consideration. So super, super excited about that. Um, so I wanted to share that. So y'all keep me in your prayers that I win that grant. Uh, but as you're promoting different programs that are for the community, because the church should be active in its community. Facebook ads are a great way to do that. Of course, as I said, you can run your ads based on demographics so that you're running it based on it to uh, to hit the page of anybody that signed up on Facebook that said they were part of a particular zip code range, right? So then once you do that, of course, there's some more layers to it, and I'll get into that as a part of my Facebook ads course. However, um, it is important that you understand that if your ad is geared towards evangelism, then you do not need to use uh, a graphic that features a picture of the pastor and the spouse or the first family. You need to use a graphic that features the product that is going to benefit the recipient. Let me tell you, um, one of the first rules of selling is to not focus on the features of the product, but instead to identify the benefit that your intended user is desiring and then to focus on that benefit to tell them this solves the problem. It is the answer for what it is you're in need of. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Tell me in the comments. I see you, Carrie. Glad to see you on this. Angel, hello there. Rhonda, of course, and Jerry Brown. Good stuff. So let me know if that makes sense. There are benefits and there are features. And most of us get stuck on features. Oh, we have a wonderful church. We're warm. We're loving. We're, um, you know, located in a particular area. We've got a sanctuary that seats a thousand people. We've got, you know, children's church. None of that matters to somebody that's without hope. You know what matters to somebody that's without hope? That you've got a counseling department that provides walk-in hours or online hours that somebody can listen. That you've got a food pantry that provides food on these particular days and these particular hours. So your Facebook ad shouldn't be come to XYZ Church where we take care of our community. Your Facebook ad would be we've got free food, meat, cheeses, deli items, beverages, right? Milk for people in our community that's absolutely free. The name of your church should be included just as a part of your address. Oh, I know some of you don't like that. But we are not supposed to be out here trying to get credit. All of the glory goes to God. And so we don't have to worry about does our church name get the credit. One of my um, two clients that I've worked with in the past are doing a joint New Year's Eve service. I'm so excited about it. And they are, it is a drive up um, event. And they're having a major gospel artist and they're doing it together and they're not worried about who gets the credit. They're not worried about, well, how are we going to do an offering and all that kind of stuff? How do we make people pay? How do we know who your people are and their people are? We are all God's people. And so, yes, I'm not, you know, um, negating the fact that there's a business side to ministry that we do have to focus on. However, it shouldn't be the main focus. 
There are a lot of ministries that aren't effective because they're too focused on paying for buildings instead of shepherding people. Oh, I done came on Facebook and started acting up. Listen, y'all, I'm just out here trying to be a blessing. I want to help you understand the importance of using Facebook ads as a disciple, as an evangelistic tool. Now, you can use it for discipling, but that's a whole nother broadcast. So I'm not going to talk about that. All right. And then lastly, talking about evergreen ads. Evergreen ads are something that once you record them, they can just play over and over again upon demand. Well, you can kind of do the same thing with Facebook ads. That's why you'll see a lot of the same people run Facebook ads all the time. You're like, oh my gosh, when are they ever going to stop? But I want to tell you from a sales perspective as an entrepreneur, one of the ways that I create income is through doing ads. I don't always run Facebook ads, but I do run Facebook ads. So from your church perspective, you can run an ad that's just on repeat all the time introducing your ministry. Now this isn't trying to get people to, um, um, you know, uh, get saved or to uh, come and get your free food. Don't try to put everything you're doing in one ad. You run multiple ads. Each ad has a specific purpose. So for an evergreen ad to stay top of mind, literally, um, you could just run an ad that says, hey, I'm, you know, pastor so-and-so, or we are members of XYZ Church, and, you know, we're missing one person, and that's you. And then just put up a really nice graphic with your church uh, information and, and the link inviting them when to worship with you. And you just run that. And maybe you want to run that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Or Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I'd probably do Sunday as well, you know, depending on what your strategy is. And you run that for six months. Well, do the math. When I said that you could run ads starting as little as $5 a day, let's say we do it four days a week, that would make it $20. So for the month, that makes it $80. So for six months, that makes it what? $480. So you've spent less than $500 and you have been consistent out on Facebook for six months. And remember I said that radio spot, you would be at like $1,500 and that would probably run for one month. And it would probably um, run for, you know, eight times a week in that month. So you, it would have run 32 times. So here I'm talking about, uh, uh, what did I say, six months that literally you could run this evergreen uh, top of mind type Facebook ad. And listen, don't get caught up in what people say. Oh my goodness, that ad is always running. It sure is. Because we are about our father's business. We're working on something. And so you've got to stay consistent so that people can get familiar with your ministry, who you are, and what you do now of course there's some strategy that goes with that and i'll be talking about that in my facebook course so if you want to find out more about my facebook course all you have to do is make sure you're on my email list because i'm going to be offering it of course to my email list first how do you get on my email list it's simple text my last name w-a-r-e to the number two two eight two eight all right so let's see here um we got any questions in the comments? I am again so excited to be back on with you guys. See my beautiful, um, this is really a storage unit behind me, but it looks like a, a buffet, but it's really a storage unit. Got it from Ikea, so super excited about it. I like to work in nice environments. They keep me motivated. And so as you know, I've been going through renovation and update and all of that stuff since the pandemic. And so kind of got it, um, 
we, we're, we're like 95% done. So I am finally able to be back out at my desk. So glad, glad, glad about that. So let me um, share my website one more time, thewearagency.com. I want to thank you so much for hanging out with me on today. And I will be back tomorrow. God bless.